Hey, I'm Tony and this is our 220 gallon rainwater system and I'm going to show you how to make one. If you're looking for a detailed step-by-step -step how to build a rain barrel system, this is going to be the video for you. I'm going to show you each step in the build process, all of the parts that you'll need, and some of the major mistakes to avoid if you want to build one of these for yourself. Some of the features in this system include a sight tube external so that you can check the water level in your system. This system has a battery operated water pump and the battery is recharged via solar power. The water pump will push water out into the drip irrigation system and it's controlled by a standard timer. And if you're completely new to solar power like I was when I started this project, I have a video how to set your own up as well. The first thing that you need to do is find your barrels. You can buy them in stores and they're pretty expensive if you do it that way. But what I did was looked on Craigslist for repurposed food grade barrels. And to my surprise, there were a lot of people selling them. I got these at a local organic farm and they were about 20 to 25 dollars each just loaded them up into the suv and brought them home facebook marketplace is another great place to find these for the stand for the barrels i just wanted mine to be as simple as possible so i took some 10 foot sections of 2 by 10 and laid them over some cinder blocks this method has worked fine for me, but if you want to build yours a little sturdier, set the boards up on end and then connect them with some horizontal boards. The closer you can set up your rain barrel system to a downspout, the easier your installation is going to be. The first thing that we're going to need to do to these barrels is cut a hole in the bottom and put in a bulkhead fitting. You can find these at Home Depot or a bunch of places on Amazon. To get started, just take the appropriate size hole saw for your bulkhead fitting and cut a hole into the bottom of the barrel. There's two types of barrels available on the resale market. One has a lid on the top and one does not. And I chose this style barrel that has the lid on the top because it just makes the bulkhead fitting installation process a lot easier. Assuming, of course, that you're able to fit inside the barrel yourself or have someone in your household that can help out by crawling inside the barrel. The other style barrel has a, about a three inch hole on the top and you've got to drop your bulkhead fitting down through that hole with a string and then try and fish it through from the bottom. And it, this style barrel just makes the bulkhead fitting installation process a lot smoother. One thing that I can't emphasize enough, but I don't actually show here in the video, is always use a waterproof silicon sealant when you're installing these bulkhead fittings. You will save yourself a lot of headaches and small leaks with that extra step. With the bulkhead fitting that I chose from Home Depot, a three-quarter inch PVC elbow just screws right into it. If you're going to be hooking up multiple barrels, you'll want a T for each barrel and you'll need some Schedule 40 PVC pipe. I used 3 quarter inch in my setup. You'll want a cap for one end and you'll notice that I have these slip ball valves in between each barrel. That's in case I need to isolate a barrel for maintenance. Here I'm just kind of fitting everything together and making sure that I've cut each of my PVC pipes to the right length before I glue everything up. This is our final check for fit. Another way that I've seen this done is to connect them with a hose instead of PVC. So if you like that option, you could do that as well. You just can't have the valves in between each barrel if you use that method. 
To get the rainwater in the top of your barrel, we've got to cut a hole. And I like these atrium drainage grates because once you fit it into the barrel, it gives you a nice little basket that you can put an additional screen filter on. So we're just gonna mark the top of the barrel and then use our hole saw and jigsaw to size the hole to fit this drainage grate. I used a four inch grate for my installation. I've seen people use screen or bird netting, but I decided to go with this 120 mesh screen for my final filter. The next thing that we're gonna do is cut a hole in the top of each barrel for an air vent. I just used a three quarter inch PVC elbow. And these vents allow air to escape as the water comes in the bottom of the barrel. Once you have those popped in, make sure you put some sort of screen or cloth over the end of the vent so that bugs can't get inside. Mosquitoes would love to go in here and make this their home. Don't forget to install leaf filters on all your gutters. That's an important step not to overlook. After I removed my downspout, I had to adjust the bracket a little higher because it was holding the downspout, not the elbow. So I had to redrill a hole and adjust the bracket height. If you do need to reattach into masonry, these hammer set anchors make it really easy. Just drill a hole and tap them in with a hammer. The leaf filters on your gutter aren't going to catch everything, so I recommend having another filter on the downspout. This is called a leaf eater. There's a bunch of them on Amazon. Uh, this was just a cheap little $10 one that I picked up at Home Depot, and then I cut it because I didn't have a lot of vertical height. The water just wraps right through and any leaves or large debris get pushed to the outside. Here you can see some black flexible drainage tubing that I tried using, although I ended up scrapping this idea because it just didn't hold the water weight very well. What I went with in the end was just some three inch PVC drainage pipe. And that holds the weight of the water very well. It's just pressed to fit together. No glue was used on this part. Up on that first elbow, you'll see I did use a gutter strap to attach the elbow and hold everything securely. If you haven't worked with PVC before, it's really easy. Once you cut it to fit with any saw, you just apply the purple primer and then the glue and then squeeze the parts together they will bond in just a couple seconds. On your end cap, make sure you leave a little bit of extra pipe in case you want to ever extend your system or add barrels. We'll just cut that pipe off, add in a coupler, and then we can add some additional pipe and additional barrels. All of these pieces I double and triple checked for length before I put the glue on. Make sure that everything lines up and that it's going to fit together before you glue it up. Those metal straps that I installed there were to carry the weight of the inline filter and timer. I ended up having to move the timer to a different location. We'll get into that in just a second. The very last piece of your PVC line will be a coupler that has hose threads on it. Then you can install a hose or your timer, whatever it is that you're gonna put on the end of your line. Since I wanted my system to be fully automated, I went with a standard Rainbird irrigation timer that allows you to set two different waterings per day. And now that we have the PVC manifold installed on the bottom, we're gonna do a quick check. And you'll notice that 
all of the barrels fill up at the same rate through the bottom of the barrel. When your barrels get full, which they will very quickly with a good rain, you do need to have a overflow cut into the system. What I originally started with was this one and a half inch hole cut into the last barrel and a one and a half inch hose. But I kind of discovered quickly that that was not draining the water out quickly enough. The general rule is that your overflow should be the same diameter as your intake on the first barrel. So I decided I needed to go ahead and make a modification to make this overflow a wider diameter. One other thing that I would have done differently in retrospect is cut this overflow hole in the first barrel, not the last barrel. Having your overflow in the first barrel allows the water to drain out faster rather than waiting for it to go all the way through the manifold system and then out the last barrel. To have a watertight seal on the drain, I purchased this 4-inch gasket from Uniseal. It does require a 5-inch hole to be drilled into the barrel. Shoving the 4-inch PVC pipe in there is quite difficult even when using soapy water as a lubricant. What I ended up having to do was take a hammer and chisel to the end of the pipe and make a good 1-inch bevel. And with that 1-inch bevel, I was able to get the pipe started all the way through the gasket. And with a couple of taps of the hammer, I was able to seat the pipe into the barrel. I used a four inch elbow and figured out that I needed to put some sealant on it because without that it was leaking and attached a four inch drainage hose to the assembly. And for good measure, this AquaSeal tape is ideal for ensuring that there's no additional small leaks. Don't forget to put a screen on the end of your overflow hose to keep bugs and animals out. Now that everything was kind of put together, it was time to go ahead and hook the timer up and do a first test of the whole system. Unfortunately, it did not work out the way that I wanted it to. With the gravity-fed water coming out of the barrels, it looks like we have pretty good water flow. Unfortunately, I figured out that was not the case. I had less than 5 PSI coming out of the pipe and the irrigation timers need a minimum of 10 PSI. If all you wanted to do was hook a hose up here and fill up a bucket, this would be just fine, but I wanted mine to go through the timer and water the drip irrigation automatically, so I needed to make some change. I decided to add a water pump to the system, which would give me plenty of water pressure for the system. Here we've got a on-demand water pump, a 12-volt battery to power it, and a solar panel to keep the battery charged. And then we just hook the timer up, and it will turn on the pump automatically. If you're going to be using your rain barrels for drip irrigation and want to figure out how to build one of these easy pump systems, I've got a separate video on how to do that. Now with the pump pushing the water, we've got good 45 PSI, and that is working really well to push water all the way out to the drip irrigation lines. Two 12-foot long beds with six lines total, and as you can see, there's plenty of water going down the entire length on both beds. I've got a video if you decide to go with a solar battery operated pump. And I even have a hack on there of how to reuse a old unused satellite dish mount to mount your panel so that you don't have to drill new holes into your roof. 
One final modification I made to the system was to add a sight tube so that I could easily check the water level. And I've got a video on how to make one of these if you want to add that to your rain barrel system. Well, I hope you got all the information you needed to feel confident to build one of these for yourself. If you have any questions, drop them below and please leave me any comments that you might have. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. If you watch this video, I'm assuming you're probably a gardener, and if you haven't thought about composting worms to provide free compost for your garden, I just wanted to highlight a video that I have on how to set up a composting worm bin. These are really easy to take care of. They eat any vegetable matter left over from your garden, kitchen scraps, and even shredded up Amazon cardboard boxes. Composting worms are an excellent way to get free organic compost for your garden, so check it out.